from the San Francisco 49ers, Jerry Rice. 20 NFL seasons, 10-time All-Pro, three Super Bowl rings with the 49ers. He must be the greatest receiver. He's a bad man. Jerry Rice! Oh, what a catch by Rice! Rice is there. Oh, my! A one-handed catch! Jerry Rice stands all alone as number one in pro football history in touchdown reception. The owner of nearly every single receiving record known to National Football League man, and he is here tonight. Is it cool that you guys are at the same table? Are we all good? Uh, do you want to show me my hey, ring Chris, one good. more time? I, I'm, I'm good, Chris. <laughs> Every time okay. I see him, he goes by. You so say, you want to see your ring again? Oh, yeah, I'd like wow. to. Yeah, you know. Are you going? You talking about Super Bowl 23? I wasn't going to, but go ahead. Give it your best <laughs> shot. On the final drive of Super Bowl 23, I had a teammate came up to me and said, we got them now. They haven't moved the ball all day. We got them now. They got to go 90 yards, whatever it was, three minutes to go. I was like, oh, my God, what are you saying? I said, would you please check the huddle and see if number 16 and number 80 are out there. And sure enough, the MVP of the game went boop, boop, boop. Cincinnati leads again 16-13. And it appears the 49ers will start deep in their own end. First down play, Montana. And out of bounds. Goes Jerry Rice with another catch. To Rice again, and he's out of bounds at the Cincinnati 47. Montana to Rice, he's in the clear. Montana, touchdown, John Taylor. There's the man, Rice. He set the table, and Taylor hit the home run. Jerry Rice, who has caught 12 passes for 222 yards to shatter both reception and yardage records in Super Bowl history. It was always a challenge with you, Jerry. And, uh, How so? Well, even when, when we had the game won, he hit 83 yarder for us with a minute and a half to go in the game and, and beat us there in Giants Stadium. So that was brutal. I still, I still dream about that play. I remember that play well. You should. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Rice with 42 seconds remaining. They get Jerry Rice out there on Mark Collins. He's covered him all day superbly. Montana, you worry, can he throw the ball? He's only one for four over 10 yards. He hits this one to Jerry Rice and breaks the game wide open. We've talked about the greatest runner in the history of the game in Emmett holds all the records, the greatest receiver now with Jerry. And yet neither one of those guys, would you say, is that freakish athlete. You know, it's one of the things that I always loved about the game of football is there's something else there. And this is about something inside your mind and your heart and your soul. You ever try to explain that to somebody, the difference in what an athlete is and what a football player is? We talk about the kind of the, the dictionary when you Put football player up there. There's a there's a picture of a guy. It's not fastest. It's not tallest. It's not biggest bench press. It's football player, and uh, that's where Jerry Rice that's goes. That's where he is. That's yeah, exactly and, right. And the thing for me, it was fear, failure. That was my motivating factor. I never wanted to let the fans down in Mississippi, the fans in San Francisco. I think the first ten years, basically, I didn't take a vacation. Now, you're not even out of breath. No, I'm in good, you know. How often do you do this? Uh, every day. You do this mountain every day? Well, we run this hill three times, then we're on the track for, for two days, and uh, I think it's really starting to pay off for me. I always wanted to get better, but I never felt like I got to the point where I was the best. The Pro Football Hall of Fame class member of 2018, Randy Moss. They call me the freak, man. I'm a, call you the freak? Because I'm a freak of nature. Fires a deep downfield. Moss! Touchdown, Vikings! Deep in the end zone, caught! Super freak! Touchdown! That was one of the greatest catches Randy Moss has ever made! No one 
foot up above his head. They can't jump with me. God, leave. The 21st overall pick in the 1998 draft, Moss set the single season record for touchdown catches with 23 in 2007, which I think you remember, Bill Belichick. Very well. I bet you do. For Randy Moss, touchdown reception number 23, an NFL record. Also a member of the NFL's all-decade team of the aughts, he joins us at NFL Films right now. What do you think of when you, know, you see Randy Moss sitting right here, Coach Belichick? One of the smartest players I've ever coached, certainly the smartest receiver. He taught me more about receiving in, in a passing game than by far than anybody else. Don't be surprised if they come out and play us a lot of zones since they're not matching. Because we, we'll kill that. You know, where they're, they're just playing, you know, left side, right side, and they're playing that three C, that cover one, right. you know, whatever, whatever they play. They can't play us like that. You know, I remember our first meeting when you came in from Oakland, and uh, I've never coached anybody like Randy Moss, and, and uh, we were talking about single high safety and a running game and all that. And Randy was like, you ain't gonna see any more single high safety. You can forget about that. <laughs> like, all right. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's telling. Well, because the, the thing about it was that I really studied uh, the Patriots, their offense, and, and how they went with their passing game. And I said, Coach, we're going to see cover two or them playing the passing game for the whole season. And he thought I was playing, and then the magic started happening. Yeah, and then it was like, well, we run you on this route, and, you know, it was a post, and. Rain is like, well, why, why do I run a post? The guy's standing right there. Well, what do you want to do? Well, let me even take it here or let me take it across him. So we put in, you know, all the different uh, conversions on the deep routes where if they were where the pattern was headed, he had a two-way go to either go over on the pistol routes and all that. And, and he ran those incredibly well. Here's it out downfield. Randy Moss is there and he has a touchdown. Jammer is playing an outside technique, so so Randy Moss comes off the line, bends into him a little just to hold him, and then runs a slam. This one, he runs a corner. He, ju he just comes like he's coming to the inside, fakes to the post, and goes back to the corner. Randy Moss runs great patterns, has great speed, and they make it look so easy. Playing quarterback is hard, getting open is hard, but when you watch them do it, it doesn't look difficult at all, does it? My first touchdown as a Patriot, I had a hamstring injury. And um, so throughout the whole month, I've been hearing reports of, maybe they should release Randy Moss. It's in the Patriots' best interest if they just let Moss just go. So I called you, we were in a preseason game, we were in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I said, coach, are there any reports of you releasing me? You said, hell no. <laughs> so that gave me confidence because I'm just coming from Oakland. I'm bringing all of this baggage with me. And so I remember my first touchdown, I haven't even opened up because I've been uh, hobbling that hamstring injury. And he said the play where I can go anywhere on the field. So Tom said, Randy, if they play this coverage, where do you want to go? I said, Tom, if they play secret coverage, I'm going immediately all the way across the field, just wait on me. Patriot. Tom was on almost on the right side of the hash and he threw me all the way across to the opposite side of the field and that's the play the coach is talking about. They got a linebacker running with him to safety and Randy Moss is one of those guys I, I got it it doesn't look like he's running full speed but nobody catches up to him. Just being able to have my speed later in my career getting up on those safeties and they're giving me a two and three way go 23 touchdowns. Yeah, 23 touchdowns. I never had a hamstring problem. Because I'm going to tell you why. Because I was not fast like this guy. 4-2-5 <laughs> in, in, in the 40. Randy Moss breaks a tackle, and Randy Moss races down the sideline, and Randy Moss just outruns everybody into the end zone. He is incredible. Randy Moss could be the fastest player in the NFL. When you guys got together, when did you know this was going to be a little different? This is a different tool than you've ever had to work with. Day one. Randy was in Houston, right? Yep. We, had to make the, uh, we were trading a fourth-round pick with the Raiders, and 
This conversation with myself and Mr. Davis has been going on for like a month. With you and the Raiders. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now we're down to like, we're down to like 12 hours before the, before the second day of the draft. For Sunday. So my phone rings. I'm in line. <clears throat> you're right going to the club. And so my phone rings and I didn't see, I didn't know the number. So I said, <laughs> excuse me, uh, I got to step away. Hello, who is this? Hey, is this Bill Belichick? So... Who is Bill Belichick? I said, man, stop playing on my phone. And I hung the phone up. <laughs> so, so then he calls me back probably within 60 seconds. And he said, no, Randy, this is Bill. So, um, you know, I hung up on the coach. And, uh, wow. Can, can I ask man. one question? You were in line for the club? I'm just saying, you're like Randy <laughs> yeah, Moss. Yeah, yeah, like, wait a minute, let's go back to the well, what's crazy line. about it? Anybody, any, anybody that knows me, Chris, know I'm, I'm not a, a flashy guy. So usually most of the time I try to hide up under a hat, as you can see. So uh, as I'm in line, nobody. <laughs> Nobody noticed but that I was in your line. Your name is Randy Moss. Well, guess what? After I got off the phone, guess what? Where I was then? They held the door open. Come on in. <laughs> they told myself, "Come on in." The guy they called Bambi back in the day with the Chargers and the Dallas Cowboys, Lance Allworth. San Diego Chargers are fortunate to have Lance Allworth in their stable, pro football's finest receiver. Allworth played 11 seasons with the Chargers and Cowboys. He won an AFL championship and a Super Bowl. And in 1978, he became the first AFL player inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Chris, what'd you like about him? You know, it, it's so hard to tell because we get highlight tapes of this guy. And so I was really enjoying watching him, but it was kind of hard to tell what kind of routes he was running because he was always so far behind the defense all you saw was him running in the end zone. So he's catching a ball and running it in the end zone. So I don't know how fast he was, but I do know this. He had this little tippy-toe style of running the ball into the end zone, thus the nickname Bambi, but he was always behind the defense. I don't know how he did it. Matriculating our way through the reveal list here for the wide receivers. Next up from The Ohio State University, a standout with the Browns and Dolphins, Paul Warfield is on this list. He was named the NFL's all-decade wide receiver team in the 1970s. He was on that, and he helped Cleveland win an NFL championship before winning two rings with the Dolphins. I think one of the most underrated wide receivers in the history of the game, for my money. You'll never see the numbers because they didn't throw the ball at the time uh, the way they do in the game today. But the routes and the ability to get in and out of cuts, it was just so effective. But one of the great receivers of all time. Coach Belichick has the clicker in his hand, which means only one thing. That means it's time to break down some wide receiver film. First up is the man they called Crazy Legs, Elroy Hirsch. A first-round pick of the Cleveland Rams in 1945, Hirsch was named to the NFL's all-decade team of the 50s and the NFL's 50th anniversary team. Now he's on the 100th, Coach. Why? First of all, his nickname, Crazy Legs, uh, it's pretty easy to see uh, <laughs> why he's called that. Um, you can see he's got very good hands here handling this punt. How do you tackle that? They just go straight to the side. Wow. I've never seen anybody run like that. The Rams converted him from a running back to a wide receiver, and as you can see in these clips, he's very fast. Nobody's catching him from behind. He had a big year in 51. He had uh, 1,495 yards receiving. Uh, so for only his uh, second, really third year of playing wide receiver, um, and again, a combination of a lot of deep passes and also some exceptional runs with the ball uh, on shorter catch and run plays. Our next wide receiver was a charter member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's Don Hudson, a two-way star with the Packers. He led the NFL in receiving in eight of his 11 seasons and won the Joe F. Carr Trophy as the National Football League's MVP in 1941 and 1942 and may just have the best nickname on the NFL 100 all-time team, the Alabama Antelope, Don Hudson. Well, Rich, a lot of interesting things about Hudson. First of all, um, he played end at the University of Alabama. Uh, Bear Bryant was the other end. Hudson was, as a, you can see his, his skills here, he had great hands and he was the first route runner in the National Football League. That guy right there in my mind probably changed the wide receiver position as much as anybody who's ever played. No question. He, he absolutely changed the wide receiver position. There were no split out receivers and there were no routes designed for receivers. It was kind of go deep or go over or go out. 
This is the Notre Dame box. So Curly Lambeau played one year at Notre Dame. Can we go over this just a little bit, this shift here? So literally, you don't know who the quarterback is going to be or. That's what? right. And, and, and whether the formation, whether the strength of the formation is to the left side or if they shift over to the right side. The thing about Lambeau was he modified this offense to take advantage of Hudson, who's at the top of the screen there, number 14. Uh, but you can see here Hudson going up for the ball. He's got strong hands. Very athletic guy. And the last one is somebody that I know you're quite familiar with, Raymond Barry. He's a member of this team. Drafted in the 20th round by the Colts in 1954, he would go on to catch a then record 631 passes for 9,275 yards and 68 touchdowns in his 13 year career. Uh, of course, he had a great quarterback with Unitas, so. Uh, that was an excellent combination. Unitas firing a sideline pass to Raymond Burry. That sets up a scoring mark. He had the toe drag swag before anybody knew what it was, too. You watch him play after play after play. The number of times he makes a catch and gets his feet down in bounds, diving usually out of bounds. That combination was amazing. Just so confident on the sideline that you know, Unitas knew if he could just get the ball over the defender, Barry would catch it and come down inbounds. How could you make a catch into that crowd? Right, yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> look at where they are. And Unitas had tremendous confidence in Barry. This is the type of play that, as a kid, when you played catch, uh, one guy was Raymond Barry, the other guy was Johnny Unitas. And if you were Raymond Barry, uh, you made those kind of catches in your mind. And, you know, that's really what the Colts were about. It was Unitas to Barry. It was a tremendous combination. Larry Fitzgerald, the third overall pick of the 2004 NFL Draft. Fitzgerald makes the grab. Touchdown, Cardinals. Fitz currently ranks in the top three all time in both receptions and receiving yards. No player ever at his age has had 100 catches and 1,000 yards in the same season. Larry Fitzgerald, the future Hall of Famer, the greatest Arizona Cardinal ever. Let's go, Jack, all the way, dog. Go, Jack. Larry Fitzgerald, number two all time on the NFL receptions list. And good to see you, Larry Fitzgerald. Good to see you as well, Larry. How are you? I'm doing outstanding. Congratulations on the team. Uh, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's an honor to be with you guys, man. It's, uh, I grew up looking up to Meyer and his men. I haven't checked with research, but I think you were the only member of this team who uh, borrowed a car for prom from another member of this team. That guy right over there. <laughs> Can you tell us this story, please, back in the day in Minnesota? Larry? Well, I mean, I mean, me even being here, uh, Randy has a large part to do with that. I'll never forget the first time I met him in uh, uh, 1998 up in Mankato, and I'm a, I'm a ball boy, and, you know, obviously he was a huge fan, followed his career at Marshall, and finally getting a chance to meet him, and he would come to my high school football games. I mean, like, you have no idea you know, the, the confidence he instilled in me and that gave me the belief that I could go out there and achieve anything I put my mind to. But what about the prom, Larry? So, I mean, <laughs> I, he had a 1990, what was that? It was a, it was a 90, what, do you nine, remember the it was a 99 BMW. It was the, the new 740, 740 L, 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 L I, and it was the coldest car out. And, uh, and I, I had the courage to go ask him what? and he kind of looked at me like, well, why are you asking me this? But in, in, his, in, his, in his way, um, he told me yes. And the kind of stuff that this man did behind the scenes for people uh, with no notoriety, no fanfare, um, was, was so inspirational to me. And I'm one of, the, I'm one of the, the many charity cases that Randy looked out for. When I first laid eyes on, on Larry, I don't really know what really what came over me, but I was seeing his dad as a beat writer for the Vikings. So knowing that that was his son and just seeing how much he wanted to play catch and how he would field the punts and things like that. So, you know, I remember a brief story and um, we were invited to his high school football game and I don't know who they were playing, but I remember going out there and we didn't really have, we just had t-shirts on. And if you know anything about Minnesota, the state bird in Minnesota is... Mosquito. There you go. The yeah. state bird is the mosquito in Minnesota. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. I didn't know that. That's the state bird. That's the state bird, Jerry. Okay. Right. So okay. we go out to one of his games. <laughs> we go out to one of his games, and you know they got the lights on. The lights were just covered. You could barely see. There's just so many mosquitoes out there. So we couldn't even enjoy his game. We're out there just flapping and fanning. We got our hats and stuff over. So, God rest her soul, his mother brings us over the off. 
Oh, okay. So she's like, I seen y'all over here and I want y'all to watch my baby's game. Here, y'all take this and y'all can keep it. So we sprayed it everywhere on our shoestrings and everything. The off settled in, we were able to see. I know it's a little crazy story, but just being able to be outside of the Vikings facility and go support, you know, basically our very own. He didn't support me at all one time. In this studio on Inside the NFL, in the history of the NFL, has there been a worse playoff team than what Arizona looks like? So now I'm world famous <laughs> in Arizona. Now Knucklehead over here goes on one of those runs for the ages. Yes. That playoff run that you had, that was the most remarkable run of football I've ever seen from a wideout. Every seat full as the Cardinals embark on their first postseason in a decade. It's a flea flicker. Warner going to throw deep. Near side going for Fitz. He's in double coverage. It doesn't matter. Larry Fitzgerald, deadly and single-minded of purpose, stabs the ball out of the air. Warner with ton of time. Throwing right side. Fitz open. Caught at the five. Heading for the pylon. Touchdown, oh. Cardinals. As time looks left, throws over the middle to Fitz. Caught inside the five, breaks a tackle, and Fitz is in. Warner going deep, airing it out. Middle of the field, Fitz is there. He caught it at the ten, at the five. Touchdown! They cannot deal with Larry Fitzgerald. Warner takes, back to throw, fade, left side Fitzgerald. He got it! Touchdown! His third of the day! Super Bowl <laughs> 43, here we come. You have all of these great wide receivers that have went to the postseason, but they didn't do it like the way he did. I just need to hear, you know, yeah. from, from that performance, like, what were you feeling? Well, you know what, Randy? I really wasn't feeling anything. Nothing different than what I had been doing. Um, nothing, I, I just – it just – the stars just aligned for me that, that those four weeks. Um, I had a lot of great guys around me that, you know, put me in position to be successful. I just did my part. I think during that Super Bowl, I saw you run away from someone. <laughs> take one to the house. And he was not one of those, uh, you know, fast guys. Right. Yeah. yeah no 4 two, 5 or anything <laughs> like that. No, no, but, you know, he close. still, he was able to catch the ball. He had football speed to get to that end zone. Warner to pass with time. Fires over the middle of Fitz. Caught at the 45, 50. Fitz is loose, 40, 30. Goodbye. Cardinals lead. Touchdown, Larry Fitzgerald. A 64-yard touchdown pass by Warner to Fitzgerald, and the Cardinals lead Super Bowl 43. I think the most impressive thing of your career, when Bruce Arians came in as your head coach, and you'd always been the wide out, you'd been the guy out wide, and yet you had the Heinz Ward role that he wanted you to come inside and block. Mm -hmm. And your blocking, in my mind, finalize the fact that you were on this team. Boy, Fitz with a great block downfield. Not very many times do you talk about a wide receiver blocking Cam Chancellor, the enforcer for Seattle. Well, I think there's always like a defining moment in everybody's career. I look back when Jerry, when he left San Francisco, people were saying, you know, can he still be the dominant player that he's always been throughout his career? When Randy, you know, the two years in Oakland, they were down years compared to what he did in Minnesota. People were saying, Does, is Randy still the, the prolific dominant pass catcher that he's always been? And what they did is they just exceeded expectations. They didn't, nothing changed. They just needed to change the scenery to showcase what they were really capable of doing. I never had to leave my team, but my coach changed the position I was at. So I was in that uncomfortable place and I, it made you it makes you dip deep it makes you really find out what you're made of when you're tested in that fashion because it was really the first time in all of my career that I ever been challenged somebody telling me I can't do what I've always done and you know you have you have two options at that point you lay down or you fight and um, and that's the only options you have Steve Largent is the ninth member to be announced here on this program the Seahawks legend played 14 years in the Pacific Northwest caught passes in 177 straight games and at the time of his retirement he held the career records for receptions receiving yards and receiving touchdowns And also another number 80 of note on the team. What'd you think of Steve Largent? Unbelievable. Not only uh, a great football player, but just a great individual. And I remember when I went to Seattle, he walked up to me, he said, I want you to wear number 80. It just blew me away. And, and, and you can't say no to a legend. 
I took a lot of uh, backlash because of that, but he wanted me to wear his jersey, but he was just that type of receiver. NFL Films is going to showcase, in my mind, his talent. Everything was a different move. He was the guy, you could watch his eyes. Like, he would look back for the ball and get the guy to turn around, and then here comes the comeback route out of it. Every single thing was perfection. Probably the closest may have been Raymond Berry back in the day that, you know, wasn't going to wow you with the athleticism, but he was going to get open because he had something creative that he had come up with and had practiced and practiced and practiced and was always open. Well, that leaves one last spot uh, on the wide receiver team, and that last spot goes to Indianapolis Colt Marvin Harrison, who played 13 seasons in Indianapolis, an eight-time Pro Bowler. He helped lead the Colts to a victory in Super Bowl 41, and of course, team with Peyton Manning to form the most prolific quarterback-receiver tandem in the history of our league. Peyton looks for the quick throw, lobs it in the corner to Marvin. That breaks the record held by tied with Steve Young and Jerry Rice. It was very difficult to vote for wide receivers on this um, in this project. This it was so difficult. But here's what I said: as a defensive coach, as a head coach, if I double covered a guy every single time we played him, I'm putting him on a list. Okay, so that's you, you, <laughs> you, and Marvin Harrison. Double coverage. We're getting beat by somebody else. Single coverage was, was really, and, and Manning knew it too. If you yeah. single covered him, he's going right to him. A quick drop and a fade to Harrison, and Harrison is able to make the catch for the touchdown. One on one with Asante Samuel. He looks out there, he had a run call, he checked out of the run, saw tight coverage, man to man on Marvin Harrison, and that's where he went. If we were uh, going to play the Colts or something like that, before warm ups, they would spend like hours out there just going through the, the route tree. This was way before the actual game. Before every game, Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison come out and they run the entire passing tree. You know, these are the shorter ones, these are the middle ones, and this is a deep one. Then they finish up with this one, the up. That was the last one. You know, when I used to look at the, the chemistry between Peyton and Marvin, there's really one play that really stood out to me, and that was that stretch play that Peyton would show that ball to an outside run, pull it back. Marvin Harrison would go in there like he's blocking the safety, and I said to myself, every time Peyton Manning and them would show that stretch run with Edron James pull it back out, you best believe it's Marvin Harrison going for a 50, 60 yarder plus. Manning on first and 10 from his own 20. Gives it to Adrian, fakes to Adrian. Now look, he's got Marvin White open, he throws it to him. He's got it to 40, 30, 20, cuts inside, 10, 5, touchdown, 80 yards. Manning to Marvin Harrison. Ike Taylor is in man-to-man -man coverage on Marvin Harrison. He's watching Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning gives that play-action fake, and that was enough for Marvin Harrison to get by Ike Taylor. And I'll tell you, if I was guarding Marvin Harrison, I would never look into the backfield. I would never watch Edron James. I would never worry about the run. That 141 catch season he had um, was That's a lot of was, catches. Was, I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. And he probably caught 40 of them on under routes. And you knew it was coming, and you just couldn't stop it. There was no route he could not run.